Here, I want to say a little bit about the themes for our course this semester. I ended the last video, which was on Kant, by talking about three themes that Kant's philosophy develops coming out of the Enlightenment. The first is the idea of relying on reason rather than God or other forms of authority. The second is the idea that history is progressive and is increasingly developing human freedom. And the third is the idea that there's a difference between an appearance and a thing in itself, and all we have access to are appearances. We can never know what things are like outside of our perception, outside of our understanding. Now, in the 19th and 20th centuries, a lot of European philosophers start to develop these ideas, but also question and even undermine them. In some cases, radically explode them. Hegel takes the first two themes I described in Kant and brings them together by saying, why think that reason and history are separate? What if reason itself is historical and human reason is in a state of collective development? So it's not just about one person becoming enlightened and then having another person become enlightened and so on and so forth, but rather about a process of collective enlightenment where reason is not eternal, just something we have to sort of tap into, but itself is coming into existence through human civilization. But that's still a pretty optimistic perspective, right? Subsequent philosophers will start to take issue with the very idea that we should rely on reason, especially relative to other components of human experience, such as perception, embodiment, and or feeling. Many of these philosophers will also question the progressive narrative of history. Why should we believe that humans are always getting better. This will become especially an issue for some of the 20th century philosophers we'll read in the wake of the two world wars and the Holocaust. It seems like European events like the Holocaust really give the lie to the idea that history is always progressive. And third, the distinction between appearances and things in themselves that Kant depends on relies on the idea that the way things appear to us depends on universal categories of understanding. We all have reason, we all have imagination, and so on and so forth. And those are structurally similar among humans. Many continental philosophers, especially in the 20th century, we'll start to wonder, can we really rely on that? Are universal categories of understanding real? 